Night's work done. It's target in Germany bombed. They'll come through, through the flak and the fighters. But you can't ever be sure that you've got through without any... There is trouble on board. Something is wrong. The skipper checks quickly with the engineer. The engineer reports that last burst of flak has hit two of our gas tanks to sea. That's all they can do. The navigator works out where they'll be when they're forced on. Landing position so that the rescue services will know where to look for them. Hello, all you chaps. Dinghy, dinghy. Prepare for ditching. Prepare for ditching. You know what that means. It means they must put their plane, a land plane, down on the sea. It will sink. And they'll be left with this. This, believe it or not, is a boat. A rubber dinghy with a bottle of gas that can inflate it in 10 seconds. It sounds a pretty desperate craft in which to sail the sea, but these floating air cushions of the Royal Air Force are wonderful little craft. Scientific design, superb workmanship in British factories, and excellent compact equipment into this little bundle, a lifeboat that has saved great numbers of lives. Let's have a look at this pocket battleship. The ship, the dinghy has her rope ladders. If the crew drop in the drink, they can pull themselves out by these. This rubber is hardly armor plate, and the dinghy may be holed by enemy fire. That's true. The dinghy carries its own supply of spurs, shaped to fit any size bullet hole. Gas is always liable to escape, and the dinghy gradually gets deflated. To pump it up again, the crew use these topping up bellows. Slower than high pressure gas, but just as effective. sailor will tell you the view of a sea anchor. That's standard equipment on the dinghy, too. It's simply a bag that creates a drag, checking the dinghy's drift, making it easier for rescue planes to find. A dinghy cruise in bad weather is no picnic, so the crew have this waterproof shelter. That's it, boys. Button yourselves in. This also keeps water from washing aboard. When a bomber crew lands in the sea, there's no certainty they'll all be able to step from the plane to the dinghy. So here are lifelines. And when a bomber comes down, it's sometimes a good idea to get away from it as soon as possible. So the dinghy has paddles. Not a bit like any paddles you know, but quite useful. There's that first necessity of a sailor, a knife. And this too is specially designed for the dinghy. The blade is punctured for lightness, the cutting edge is curved to make it less likely to damage the dinghy. The cord guards against loss, but it's long enough to let anyone aboard use the knife. And if it should fall overboard, the handle is cork, so it floats. Along with the dinghy go three emergency packs, just three more neat little bundles from Britain. But they, like the dinghy itself, save lives. The first pack contains food and drink. Canned tomato juice, complete with opener. Drinking water is canned and opened in the same way. Drinking cups are marked so that rations can be divided fairly. The emergency food is scientifically planned to give the most sustenance in the smallest space. There are biscuits, malted milk tablets, and tablets for purifying impure water if the can supply runs out. So the second pack is full of devices to attract attention. Marine distress signals with special covers to keep them dry. That's just one more reason for saving rubber. A shield to protect the hands goes with the flares. Vary cartridges, 
signals in battle, and signals at sea. Each dinghy carries a supply with a very pistol to fire them. This little bundle is a substance called fluorescine. It is trailed on the sea and makes a vivid green stream which can be seen from the air eight miles away. And there's also a balloon with its own special gadget to inflate it. The balloon serves to attract attention, but its main job is to support the aerial of the portable radio. Oh yes, there's a radio. And this little ship even has a telescopic mast on which a flag can be hoisted. Everything to attract attention and save lives. What's this? Equipment for fancy dressed balls while adrift? No, just a colored cap for each man to wear to help attract attention. One of the things you'd miss most if you had to go without it is a match. Here are matches that stay alight in a storm. The third emergency pack is the ship's medicine chest, a well-planned first aid kit. And just to make sure that no chance of calling for help is missed, the bottom of the box is a heliograph, all that, and it that may save the crew of a bomber. Let's go back to the bomber we started with and see what happens as they come down in the drink. Hello, wireless operator. Get back to your ditching station. Quick. OK, Skipper. Wireless operator ditching. Hello, second pilot. Can you hear me OK? OK, Skipper. Let us hear gently. everything. Search play. Go into the area named in the last SOS message to scan the sea. In the incessant raids of the bomber command, some of the crews must ditch, and they may drift for hours or days. Their lives depend on the speed and skill of the searcher. The plane drops a smoke float to guide the launch to the spot.
This crew is lucky. Their rescue came soon. But the swiftest rescue would have been too late if it hadn't been...